Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com and in this 10th video in my React 2021 of course we're going to be covering custom hooks and why you'd want to use custom hooks and what are they. Um, I mean we have used custom hooks in some of the previous lessons but I didn't really get into sort of like what makes a custom hook and some of the benefits of using custom hooks in organizing your code and making dev tools work better for you. Okay. So I'm gonna, first what I'm going to do is I'm gonna create a new component. Okay, so we're just gonna call this new file custom hooks. We'll make a custom hooks component just to be sort of the component I'll make this lesson from. So again, I'll just copy the stuff from footer, put it in custom hooks, and we'll do that. And we'll just call this custom hooks. Oops. Okay. Okay, and then let me just change this to a name tag. There we go. Okay, so there's that. Like, let me head over to app.js. And again, if you ever want to like stay, if you like these videos and you want to stay in touch, join the Slack and Discord community over there at devnursery.com. That's kind of where I'm at all the time. Okay, and let's just kind of import that into app. And I'm going to remove styling. That was from the previous video. And I'm going to import custom hooks. And then use custom hooks over here. Custom hooks. Good. Okay, let's start. And PM start. So first, let's just show you what happens when you don't use custom hooks, okay? Which, you know, you don't have to do. You really, you can do, there's nothing you can do with custom hooks that you couldn't do without custom hooks. It's just custom hooks allow you to take some of the logic out of your files um, and make life a little easier. So let me head over to our custom hooks component. And let's just pretend, okay, I'm gonna import the use state hook from react okay so I have the use state hook and so let's say I, I want to have like I want to have two counters right so I'm gonna say const counter one set counter one equals use state zero const counter two set counter two that equals use state zero <clears throat> so if I look at my dev tools again you can always see any state that the component has in dev tools so I hit over the dev tools and I click on custom hooks that's the component and I see it has two hooks but see they both are from the use state hook so they both show up a state which, you know, if, if you have like 10 different instances of state, that's gonna be like 10 different hooks are listed there. And it's gonna be kind of hard to tell like which which is what data. Like, again, it's not too bad because you kind of know what each one should have. So you can kind of tell by looking at it, but they're not like, they don't have any kind of label that makes it easy for you to know. Okay, which can be kind of annoying. So this is like the first sort of use case of custom hooks. What I could do is I could wrap each of these calls to use state in their own hook. So that way I can say, um, you know, instead of instead of me having to see state, I can see something more informative. So what I could do is outside the function, because you have to define the hook outside the function, what I would do is I would just do like do const and you always have to use the word use so it knows it's a hook. So I would say use counter one equals and then I would just say oh, it's a function that returns use state zero it just returns it just returns the state so it's the same thing okay all I'm, so then what happens is that now I'll replace this with use counter one because now I'm using a hook called use counter one I invoke it and now when I look at custom hooks so you can see that now I see that I have I'm using a hook called counter one and inside that hook counter one I have a state but at least I have this little label now. Okay, and then I can do the same thing for the other one. I can be like const 
use counter two. And then again, I can, I can do whatever I want in this function. I can use all the hooks that I want. But again, I have to use this. I have to use the hook function itself inside here. So again, you, because technically, I'm not really. I'm still executing the function. Like the the logic still gets executed from within the function itself. I'm just wrapping all that hook hookful logic inside of a custom hook. So I use state zero. So now I would go to counter two, and then just replace this with use counter two. Okay, <clears throat> and again, all this function is doing is just returning the result of use state. So it's essentially the same thing, except now when I get when I look at my dev tools, I see counter one and counter two. Okay, that's cool. Okay, that's neat. This becomes a little bit more useful if it's something I want to use multiple times. So, so for example, let's say I want to have lots of counters, and I'm going to be defining them the same way. Why not have a hook that kind of generates what I need? Okay, and the cool thing is you can also use it to generate functions you may need. So in this case, what I may do is let me do first do it with use counter one. I'm going to wrap this in curly brackets. It's going to complain for a second. What we'll do is we'll return. Right now, I'll leave it as return use state zero. But let's say I want to add like an add one and an add and a negative one function. So that way you can decrement and increment the counter. So instead of me having to write those functions now, what I could do is do something like this. I'll write those functions. So I'll say like, so I'm going to refactor this. I'll just shut down the server for a second. Um, I'm going to take the use state, take that out, and actually put it here. So I'll say const counter set counter equals use state one. And we're just going to change this to use counter. I'm going to just make a use counter hook that I can reuse multiple times. Okay, so I'm not, I'm not, I'm using it partly for the naming, so I know like which are my counters. But I'm going to make this a little bit more robust. So I'm going to say, I'm going to create a function called const, you know, add one, and we'll just say that equals an empty function. And this way, I don't have to like write all this out inside the component. And I could, I could write this in a separate file and import it. So let's, actually, let's do that. OK, so I'll create a new file called custom hooks. Or I'll say, or just say hooks.js. And then I'm going to move this custom hook over there. So I'm going to cut this out, move it to my hooks.js. So this way, again, it's going to clean up my code. So I'm going to say add one just equals set counter to counter minus one. Okay, and then I'll do the same thing with minus one. And I gotta import use state in this file, so let me just do that real quick. Import use state. Okay, const minus one equals set counter counter minus one. So this should actually be plus, so we're just adding. Okay, and then what we do is instead of returning counter and set counter, I'm going to return counter add one and minus one. So I'm not gonna, and this allows me to create hooks, it allows me to, like, to limit, like if I have other developers on my team, I can kind of limit what they can do with the state by creating, giving them just functions that make the changes I want to be able to be made the state, and they get they get that. It's convenient for them because they don't have to create these functions themselves, but it's also good for me because they can't change the state in ways I can't predict. Okay, I, they're only going to get past these two functions. They never actually get access to the set counter function when they use this hook. So then I would just export this. So I export use counter, and now what I can do is go back to custom hooks. I don't need use state anymore. I can now import use counter from dot slash hooks and now instead of using I can just say use counter use counter and then in this case what I would do is like say counter one add one minus one you know meaning like it's the, the first counter counter two 
add two, minus two. And I kind of have all the things I need for my counter. And notice, like, this now looks like a lot more condensed. It's going to be, and then I can just easily create my, my counters. So I can sit here and just replace this. Create two divs. First div is going to have an h1, which is going to show counter one. And then two buttons. Add. Minus. And then I can be like on click equals add one. And then here I'll say on click. On click equals minus one. And then I can just copy this div and do another counter. And then I can just basically change all these to two. And then this should be all up and going. But notice again, all that logic of like how these defining these functions and whatnot, they don't have to necessarily be located here. My component looks a lot cleaner. It's kind of easy to exactly know what I'm doing. I'm grabbing a counter. So use counter is very descriptive of what I'm trying to do here. The names of the functions I'm pulling out of it are very descriptive. So even if you don't know necessarily how use counter works, probably by looking at this code, you could deduce how it works. And that's good code, where you can have less code be more descriptive instead of having more verbose files that are less obvious as to what they do. So creating custom functions with those name, sometimes even if you don't necessarily need a function and you're not reusing that bit of logic, but being able to wrap that logic under a namespace that is clear to whoever's reading your code, um, it can oftentimes be of great value and make your code more readable, um, allow you to not clutter up one file, so it's, again, more readable. So npm start. And then see, we have our two, and I can add, minus, add, minus. It works. And then if I go over to my components thing, I look at custom hooks, I see that I've I've been using the use counter hook twice, and then it shows me any it shows me any hooks that are used within the hook. So again, if I use use effect, if I use a ref, I use a whole bunch of different hooks inside that custom hook, it'll break it all down when I when I break down that that particular subhook. Okay, and this a lot again, so I can create any kind of complex hookful logic. Into and encapsulate it inside a hook, like you saw this in the in the advanced uh, state management video, video number eight. You noticed we saw this. We did that as a way to we created a custom hook for grabbing the context, because otherwise you would have to import the context and the use context hook into every component where you wanted to receive data from the provider. So by creating a custom hook, it was just a matter of importing the custom hook, and you had the data, easy peasy. Um, so. Custom hooks can be a really powerful way of making your React code, again, more descriptive, because again, oftentimes saying use this is really clear as to what you're doing. Like they really have, it's really easy to kind of cr create a, a, a hook name that's clear as to what you're doing. Um, but again, it also improves your display here in DevTools to make what you're do doing in DevTools much clearer and easier to understand. So hopefully that gives you a little bit more information about like custom hooks. I think at this point I've kind of hit the peak. Uh, at this point what I would recommend is going to check out my video, my other React videos. Um, I have a videos I recommend is checking out the video on React request and the video on um, recoil. These are some really good libraries, but I also have videos on Redux. I have video, I think I have a video on Formic somewhere. Um, and then also again, I'm not the only person who makes videos. But now I think at this point you have a foundation React for you to go out there and explore and have fun. And I also recommend maybe trying out another front end framework. The easiest to pick up would be Svelte. Um, but since you know React now, SolidJS is another good choice because a lot of the patterns are very similar. It uses JSX. Um, Stencil also uses SolidJS, but it uses class components. So that can be a little bit of a learning curve. But I have videos on it. And um, Vue is also pretty easy to learn. Angular is a bit harder to learn, but I have videos that'll get you through. Um, but Angular can be very powerful once you learn all of the parts. It's just a lot of parts. 
Um, but the, the good thing about learning multiple front end frameworks is that it makes it clear sort of like what are the front end ideas? Like what are the ideas that are framework agnostic? Okay, like what is the big idea versus things that are just like specifically React? Because when you only learn one framework, it just seems like everything is specifically a React thing. And you don't realize like a lot of these patterns, a lot of these ideas are ideas you see in all these frameworks and they're more larger programming concepts being implemented in slightly different ways. So I do recommend checking out those videos to learn at least one other framework, just so you can see them side by side and get a better idea of what your options are. Um, you know, but my bias would be go learn Svelte. Svelte is awesome. So I'll see you all later. Have a great day and enjoy.